Today we are going to discuss the historical, religious, and musical milieu of northern Germany, which gave rise to the unique style of Moravian musical worship, and how the Moravian musicians adapted Protestant and Catholic musical practice to their own uses. For this, we will concentrate on that part of the Herbst uh, manuscript collection catalog labeled Extended Works in the Johannes Herbst Collection. These works, mostly by the major North German church and opera court musicians, include masses, oratorios, hymns, cantatas, psalms, passions, te deums, musical dramas, and motets. The principal composers of Dresden, Berlin, Leipzig, Magdeburg, Weimar, and Hamburg are represented, as well as Haydn and Mozart from Vienna and Handel from London, by way of Halle, where he was born in North Germany. The uses to which Moravian musicians would put these works will be discussed. But first we'll examine the musical establishments of northern Germany during the 18th century and their music. Lutheran Protestantism was the state religion of Saxony and Prussia. However, since the elector of Saxony was also king of Poland, he himself had to become a Catholic convert. Religious tolerance was the custom. Lutheran, Reformed, Huguenot, Catholic, and Jew lived together in amity. This was not always so. In 1421, Petrus Dresdensis, the first cantor of note in Dresden, was burned at the stake for, guess what, the Hussite heresy. Fortunately, in the 18th century, the Moravians brother, brethren were not only tolerated, but were a highly respected community under the protection of Count von Zinzendorf. The music of the Protestant churches is well described by Johann Joachim Quantz in his celebrated essay of 1752, at a time when Moravian sacred music was at its height of development. He writes, that it, the Protestant church music, is composed of parts of the mass, namely the Kyrie and Gloria, the Magnificat, the Te Deum, Psalms, and the Oratorio. Now, here's where we come in. The rest are compositions set to free texts, the majority in cantata style with Bible verses intermixed, which are elaborated in the manner of Psalms. The texts are adjusted either to the Sunday or feast day or to certain particular ceremonies, such as funerals or weddings. The anthems of the English are ordinarily worked out after the Psalms, since they consist mainly of biblical words. From this list, one can easily recognize those forms which the Moravians chose for their worship. One thing Quantz failed to mention is the congregational singing of chorales and hymns practiced in both Protestant and Moravian churches. The Herbst collection of extended works contains examples of all these types of sacred music in the Latin, Italian, English, and German languages. Also included are translations called parodies from one language into another, such as English, Italian, or Latin into German. Quantz finishes his description of Protestant music with this telling statement. The composer has the opportunity to demonstrate his ability both in the elaborate style and in the touching and affecting style of composition, the latter requiring the highest degree of compositional skill. That's the music you just heard. Gavantz has just stated that the touching and affecting style requires more compositional skill than the elaborate. Elaborate was defined in his time as polyphonic, florid, and called old style. The touching and affecting, or here it comes, I hope to say it right, in Finsommer steel, was deemed the new manner. Music in the cathedrals was defined as either polyphonic or figured. The Moravians chose the new manner and figured music for the church but as we shall see from the Herbst Extended Works collection, they could and did sing polyphonic music. 
Protestant cathedrals were very large and in great cities. Their organs were very large with great pipes, great volume, and often were used for concert and solo performances by distinguished virtuosos like the Bach, Kunau, Handel, and Homilius. These men were the composers of the Protestant church's music and the educators in their choir schools and the directors of the cathedral music. Moravians, on the other hand, lived in small villages with small churches having organs meant solely to accompany chorale and congregational singing. Aside from the scale, the biggest difference between the Lutheran music and that of the Moravians was in the constituency of the choirs. The Lutheran being soprano, alto, tenor, bass, or for Italian music, soprano, soprano, tenor, alto, bass, while the Moravians were soprano, soprano, alto, bass. Why? The answer may lie in the fact that the Moravians educated girls and women, and the Lutherans maintained choir schools for boys only. Thus, the Moravians had available numbers of trained female voices there are other theories, a lot of them. That one happens to be mine. <laughs> Turning now to the contents of this collection. The music of this era in northern Germany was a blend of Italian lyricism with German discipline. The Italian influence goes back at least a century to the return to Dresden of Heinrich Schütz from his studies in Venice with Giovanni Gabrielli. It was Schutz, together with Michael Pretorius, who adapted the Latin Symphoniae Sacrae into the German Geistliche Konzerte, a distant ancestor of the Moravian anthem. The towering musical figures of 18th century Italian opera were born, who were born in North Germany were Johann Christian Bach, G.F. Handel, Johann Adolf Hasse, and K.H. Graun. All three composed Italian operas and also sacred music in German and Latin. Handel and Bach settled in London after successful careers in Italy. <coughs> Hasse had three simultaneous careers in Dresden as Kapellmeister, in Venice, and in Vienna. Graun's entire career was spent in Brunswick and then as Kapellmeister of Frederick the Great in Berlin. Now I have to take a little sip of water. Hasse and Graun, of course, had the greatest influence on the music of northern Germany and were the harbingers of what Kvantz described and advocated as the mixed style. By number, Hasse leads all other composers in the Herbst collection with nine works. Seven of these are Italian sacred oratorios for the king's Catholic chapel and two Te Deums in Latin. The oratorios were intended for private performance before invited audiences in the chapel. I like to think that Count von Zinzendorf attended these performances and procured for his musicians manuscript copies of these works. They were not published, and they were, uh, they were just copied out by the uh, court copyist. These uh, oratorios were composed between 1734 and 1758. The last, Magdalena, was composed while the court was in exile from Dresden because of the Seven Years' War. And it premiered in Venice. This work is very different in style from the others. On examining the score, one is surprised to see that St. Peter is sung by an alto. The Venetians had access to a voice not available to the Protestant churches of Germany. So far as we know, none of these works were performed as written by Moravians. How However, some movements were adapted by Moravian composers to German texts and performed as Moravian anthems. There are in the collection Latin works from the Catholic liturgy, which were by Hasse used in the Protestant church. 
These include two settings by Hassa of the Te Deum Laudamus, previously cited, as well as Te Deum by K.H. Ground, composed to celebrate Frederick's victory at the Battle of Prague in 1757. I have to explain to you that Saxony was on one side in the Seven Years' War, and um, Prussia was on the other side. Everybody had ganged up on uh, Frederick the Great. And because the king of, or the elector of Saxony was the king of Poland, and Poland had, was uh, really uh, dominated by Russia, and Russia was having a war against Frederick. Do you get it? It's, it, it's just like now, right? And um, so, I mean, it's the strangest thing, the neighbors being at war with each other like that. Um, let's see, where was I? Also, there is a Catholic mass composed in Brunswick by Ground, who wrote our first piece, and mass portions by Pergolesi and Orazio Benevoli. Anybody who's ever heard that name before? I'd like to talk to you afterwards. <laughs> Two Stabat Maters are in the collection that although originally composed in Latin, were performed in Romler's, the poet from, we just heard, from Romler's German parody. One composed by Pergolesi and the other composed by Joseph Haydn. There is an Italian passion in the collection composed by Niccolo Ciomelli, the um, Venetian opera composer, with a, with a libretto by Metastasio, who was the greatest uh, uh, opera of uh, librettist living. In the English language, we have the choruses from Handel's Messiah, but with a German translation superscribed by Herbst <laughs> on the top of the English words. Two works by C.I. Latrobe, His Dawn of Glory and the Fairfield Cantata, Cantata are in there. The only other work by a Moravian composer in this extended collection is a funeral cantata composed by Herb's son, Johann Ludwig. There are two collections within this collection that are of special note. First, there is a six volume set of duets, trios, sextets, and choruses drawn from the Italian operas of K.H. Ground, who was known as Carlo Enrico when writing an Italian opera. These full scores were published in Berlin in 1773 and 74 by the well-known teacher, writer, and J.S. Bach scholar, Johann Philipp Kierenberger. His declared purpose was to encourage composers to emulate the new manner and also to do exactly what the Moravian composers were already doing, that is, adapting these pieces to German sacred texts in order to, and I quote, improve the music of the church. The second collection in the collection is of four-part motets and songs in score form by various composers, edited by <coughs> Johann Adam Hiller. <coughs> Hiller was an outstanding Leipzig musician, writer, and cantor at the Thomas Schule. These five volumes were a collection of motets meant to entertain and to educate lovers of, of part singing. These works are to be found in every Moravian collection in America, in prints and in manuscripts. Numerous performances are noted in concerts and literally from rooftops. The lessons learned from these volumes prepared singers for the complexities of the modern choral works they would soon encounter. The question rises, why did the Moravian musicians take the trouble to copy so many complete extended works in full score if all they were going to do was cherry pick occasional movements for adaptation into anthems? Their composers were perfectly able to create a very high level of original music. And why were there so many sets of performance parts in the various Moravian collections? Official records barely ever mention music unless monetary expenditures are involved. 
in memorials, the achievements of outstanding Moravian musicians are barely, if at all, mentioned. For a long time, we were led to believe that performances of major choral works by Moravian musicians began with early 19th century performances of Haydn's creation in Philadelphia, Bethlehem, and Salem. But in 1976, Dr. Barbara Strauss brought forth her edition of the Verzeichnis, the register of the concert series produced at the Nazareth Boys School, which began in 1797 and continued until 1825. At these concerts, in addition to orchestral and chamber music performances, most of the important sacred choral works by 18th century North German composers were performed. Many of these works are found in Herbst by composers we have not yet mentioned. J.D. Reichardt, J.H. Roll, E.W. Wolf, J.D. Turk, G.A. Homilius, J.F. Doles. These are all were very, very important composers. Their music is being resurrected right now and recorded in Germany. And you can, they're, you can, they're becoming available. And to listen to the music, well, like what you just heard, it's, it's just remarkably good music that has just been um, neglected for so long. In these concerts, when they brought all of these composers uh, forth in Nazareth, Pennsylvania, you have to assume they're being played elsewhere, but nobody was mentioning it. Because we have uh, scores and parts to all of these things downstairs. We're sitting on a gold mine here. Oh, well, in these concerts, the Moravians basically brought Germany to America. These concerts were produced by the outstanding Moravian composer, David Moritz Michael. It is almost certain that other Pennsylvania Moravians participated, such as Jacob Van Bleck, J.C. Beckler, J.F. Pater, and of course, Johannes Herbst. Dr. Marilyn Gombesey's pioneering achievement in editing the Herbst catalog was published in 1956, at which time she acknowledged that there was still much to be done. Now, the Verzeichnis was published 20 years later, the thing I was just uh, referring to. Copies of what may prove to be Herbst manuscripts constantly appear in various collections of the Moravian Music Foundation <coughs> in Bethlehem and in Winston-Salem. Yes, there's more to be done, and much more of the story to be told. Thank you very much. Um, would you like to uh, ask me any questions? Would you like to make any comments? <laughs> okay, then that'll be it. Thank you very much.